Whoa. So welcome to another session of DAO Governance Education Session. I am your lead uh, themes along with Punkar, but today we're going to actually be um, led by Kohei at Senate, who's going to share his experiences as a DAO operator and some of the gaps and opportunities that he saw um, in the areas of governance and how Senate is hoping to solve some of those problems. So Kohei, it's up to you, go ahead. Hi, hi guys, nice to meet you. Some of them, I think I've already met. Some of them were first time to meet, but nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Kohei and um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll do intro introduction of myself and what I'm doing. Uh, but first of all, I wanna say that uh, um, I'm not gonna give you like a professional presentation. What I wanna do at, uh, for today is um, I'm, I, I would like to I would like to share my learnings and findings through uh, my DAO journey, like contributing to some of the DAOs and also building a product for DAOs. Uh, to have the opportunity to kind of like a, uh, discuss about the problems or new ideas in DAO governance between us. Uh, to basically just have fun. Uh, that's what I wanted from this community. So all of us, I think, are governance now, right? I think it's just like super special thing. Like usually people hate DAO governance. <laughs> so yeah, like I am excited to share my learnings and yeah, just like hop in a call really uh, to, to ask more questions or, you know, share your ideas. Uh, then yeah, I'll probably step now. <laughs> Um, can you share um can you see my screen now yep all right uh so as i said uh, my name is kohei uh and i'm from senate labs which is operation tool for governance teams um i'll go deep out later and also i'm um it's my hobby, but I'm running a product called This Week in DAOs, which is like um, live news every day, just focus on DAO. Right now, like my intention is really DAO governance, so a lot about DAO governance usually. Uh, and also I am contributing to Element Finance, which is like high fix uh, yield farming. Uh, and uh, I'm helping them structure DAO governance and also like a delegation program and so on. Uh, but anyway, so it's all about it. So I would like to start uh, my journey of DAOs. Uh, so I joined a space by joining a DAO called Index Co-op. Uh, you might uh, you might like have heard of it or not. This is a DAO that is making DeFi index. Uh, it's like DPI or um, like Metaverse or like a lot of DeFi index, uh, like DPI, GMI, that. So the reason why uh, at the time I was like, I had no idea about what DAO is. Um, and, uh, but like, I just kind of like find it interesting um, in about the concept of DAOs. Like, so I was like looking for the opportunity that I can join and I got into Index Co-op uh, because um, I think you guys, I don't know if you guys have heard seen this before but index Corp is a pretty unique DAO. uh i think in my opinion like they have like the best quality of bonding process for new contributor um once you join a disco you'll kind of get a notification with the ull of this link and you get like like step one to 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 seven like to do things that you have like you you better do to kind of like uh, um, get uh, enough context of like of DAOs and also how to contribute into DAOs. Uh, and in the process, you kind of like be able to join community call to, to introduce yourself and also find right community uh, working group to, to contribute it to. Anyway, in this club has the, had the, the best quality of onboarding process. So fortunately, I join and next go up and started working um as a contributor to to lead the asian team um but the thing is um 
we had pretty unique um, like governance structure as well. But the thing is, like you know, um, last December uh, we've got pretty shit show <laughs> in our governance uh, in Mexico, which was the argument between councils um in uh, index school we call it wise holes. um it's like a council like someone who had more governance power and influence at the DAO, and between so councils and community member um and what i learned from like index club as a DAO was that DAO as a governance framework is not really uh it's not really uh, suitable for the community that is like developing product. Like I think we can call it like a developing DAO or product developing DAO. Like it's not really super efficient because you cannot really have a consensus. You cannot really like try to have a consensus for every single making decision because like you have a lot of competition and also you it requires a lot of like um um like professionality um or expertise to make decision right like it, anyway like i can't go too deep because like it takes too much time but what i wanted to say about this learning my learning here was that uh, <laughs> dow governance um like kills all the potential of index corp as a building team and it really didn't like it like it didn't look like fit it. uh so so that was my first experience at dow can like, i ask a follow-up so, in regards to that so yeah is it because the role or the purpose of the governance nest wasn't aligned with what the other nests were doing that it seemed like a stopgap uh, or like is there a way for governance as a concept to fit within the different nest to make it much more effective Great question. So this uh, working group called Governance Nest is Nest is not really about governance of index code. It's more about governance of other protocols uh, because like index code has pretty a lot of uh, native token for other DAOs. Um, and so so that's why like we have working group uh, that work as a delegate for index code to participate in other DAOs governance. But uh, to your question, um, the reason why index of governance kind of collapse in the middle is because I think um, in order to make our product success, we really needed to be efficient. But so, so that's why we made this council wise holes, which is a council that have more power uh, uh, added out, right? Uh, for like defined period of time. But the thing is like, um, for most of the community member, like we had the intention to participate in governance too. Like we like wanted to to make it decentralized and like be the one who participate in make decisions or you know build a product. Like I think that was a great frame, like governance frame, like governance mechanism to distribute a, like you know ownership or like governance power to make it decentralized to to be robust and resilient, but like I think there's a trade-off of efficiency and like these like trade-off of efficiency like didn't really fit to index top at, at least like for that like stage like a bootstrapping phase um does it make sense things there are no wrong answers <laughs> okay <laughs> okay I'll, I'll I'll go like I'll keep going uh but Please stop Funko me has, if you uh, got. Funko has a question actually too. Definitely, go ahead. So I'm not sure if it's a question uh, or maybe yes. Uh, Kuwait, are you still part of the index group or? No, I I left. Uh, when when have you left? It was uh, last February, as I, if if I was correct. Okay, because yeah. I know that. that uh, so I've been part of the index group since uh, November last year till like June or okay. like maybe uh, May, uh, I think uh, this year. And there has been also some like another transformation happening basically uh, around spring, summer uh, this year. Mm. And I, I think yeah. this, this was more related to 
uh, kind of the business um, opportunities in the way like like the governance can be really great or like you know we can like design stuff but if we do not have revenue to kind of support all the team members it mm -hmm. just cannot sustain on it on its own just on the fundamentals yep. we yep. need also you know to get kind of uh, the real value creation there and so on so that's maybe one one point i would add like that even mm. when the governance i think has been shaped pretty well eventually at the index group uh after the transformation it's still like uh because of the mark market turned down and maybe some strategic mm. decision actually didn't halt because of other other external factors mm. great interesting yeah yeah i i think i i really really know about the current move for index group so that's great to know yeah and and also like i think another thing that i learned about index club was that because of our onboarding for uh onboarding for this one like we've got so many new contributors so it's great but <laughs> it kind of became so chaos like everyone started like how to say craving for money <laughs> for compensation and it became chaos so so like i think the time that i was at index club like we kind of like transitioning from like like the idea of like permissionless workforce to the to more like corporate stuff like there's a higher like there's like a higher inflow and most of the contributor are like full time and and so like yeah so um <laughs> i'm not gonna talk about index club for all but anyway that's something that i kind of learned when i was at index club up um so my conclusion at index club was like that um yeah so yeah like development company like community is not really suitable for DAO. so i started looking at social DAO such as like fwv um or uh, like forefront i think seat club and and others um and eventually i just like thought that hey why don't why don't i make one right uh so i made one social DAO called Wagumi DAO. It's absolutely <laughs> written in Japanese. So you guys can't really understand. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's basically like a developer DAO in Japan uh, to to um, like to have like people who's interested in Web3 uh, to to basically share the space, uh, to have the space to to interact with others, discuss, share new knowledge and new opportunities uh it became pretty well like it became like right now it's like six thousand members i guess i don't know let's see uh let's not share my discord chat with you oh i'm sorry sorry <laughs> sorry uh so anyway um so it's great it, it kind of became success uh in some in some way but the thing that i kind of like thing that i learned from building Wagumi DAO, which is like one of the forms for social DAO, is that it's great, but my question was like, does it really need to be a DAO? Because like when we are thinking about um, structure for Wagumi DAO, like operation structure for Wagumi DAO, like we needed to like have a consensus, like we needed to like uh, have a consensus from community member through like snapshot voting, but like there was like too many things uh, and like and like we we just like couldn't find a reason why we needed out like because like you know if you have an OC safe like and snapshot board and like it's great but it's not really you don't really give any ownership or how to say power like governance power to any community member um but like for social DAO, it's not really a necessity thing. Like, people want community, but people are not super interested in, like, you know, like, owing the governance power and participate constantly. Uh, to, to me, like, you know, building, like, hmm, I, I don't think I can explain it clearly now, but, like, my, my thoughts after building this was, like, I basically I didn't really get the 
clear answer why social DAO needs to be DAO, like decentralized governance uh, community. Um, so what I wanted to say was like, so I, so this is pretty a hot take for DAOs from my side, but um, I don't believe any form of DAOs except DeFi protocol. My, so like, like my conclusion after like participating in two DAOs was like, I think DAOs are like the way to make a uh, protocol decentralized uh, in a governance form uh, to make it safe for everyone to use it. Like decentralization is, I think, the only reason why people want, like, want to choose as a governance mechanism. Uh, but for social DAO, like, they basically most of the time, Twitter is like super small. Like, <laughs> the risk is like super small, so you don't really need to make it decentralized for the governance process. And and product development DAO too. Like, once it reached the PMF and it became huge. Probably it needs to be, but in the bootstrap phase, like uh, the traditional is super small, risk is super small, like you need efficiency to bootstrap, like there is no really reason to to make it down. Uh, so yeah, so that's why like I started digging into a DeFi protocol, like focus on DeFi protocols governance. Um, and thing that I, um, I'll skip to a part, but Thing that I realized Actually, is um, that... Kohei, I just have one question in regards to your Wagumi. Um, and yeah. I think it brings an interesting point of like DAO governance is really about collective decision making, right? Mm -hmm. And so like as a service DAO, um, what areas do you think that collective decision making would be appropriate? And then what areas do you think that collective, because I think that when we're looking at DAO governance, we're getting it also confused with operational structures and strategy of like mm -hmm. how the DAO should function. But mm -hmm. if you were to look at DAO governance as a collective decision making tool or activity, like mm -hmm. how would it apply more appropriately for Wagumi? Hmm. Great question. Um, then you can assess if governance is actually needed um, in this case. Well, right? I I don't think so. I don't believe the collective intelligence part because, like, while running a Wakumi DAO, like, yeah, it's great that you have like a you can like bootstrap, like brainstorm with a lot of idea with the community members. But at the end of the day, like, you will see the like drawback of like democracy, which is like. Just people want whatever they want, like, and they'll vote for themselves, like the benefit of themselves. Like, if you have, I have you looked at like uh, the forum of like Gnosis Safe, like Safe DAO before? Like, when they talk about safe token allocation, like the community just like collapse and people just like <laughs> craving to, like, people just talking to, uh, started talking about increasing the allocation percentage. Uh, for the safe measure, like I kind of like saw the same result at Wakumi DAO too. Like it's great that you can give some voice and power to the community member, but like, mm, I yeah that like I didn't really um, see the reason why community want DAO, um, especially for bootstrapping phase. I get it. And I think that that also just speaks to like tiered governance and access to governance and whether or not decision making, depending on what it is, needs mm -hmm. to be provided by the whole community or not. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's just an interesting case that like in a learning that I hope that many of us start to think about is that like when we design governance processes or systems, it has to be aligned with what the community wants. Right. So you have to think about community design and then look at it's not about collective like intelligence and more about collective decision making. So like if I become a member at a DAO and I pay a certain amount of tokens to enter that DAO, there's an expectation that maybe like once a year, like, you know, like an annual general meeting that I'll have a vote. And so like I think that we should just like really look at how those play in the real world and whether or not they're appropriate. And if it's a service DAO, 
I think that maybe only people would be interested if you like got more partnerships or if you wanted to increase the hourly rate or whatever. So I think that like when we're designing governance, it's, it's really important just to design for that community in mind. And so I agree with mm. you, if it didn't work for Wagumi, then it didn't work for Wagumi, but that's, that's okay. Like, I think that we have this idea that governance just ha can fit into everything <laughs> without right. thinking about the community and whether or not they want that. So just interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think you have a good point. Like if community want the ownership and then maybe, yeah, Dow could be the, the great tool to, to give them the opportunity and also, you know, create a community. Yeah, that's true. Maybe like Mogumini is not like, it wasn't like really fit into that. Um, but like, you know, for DeFi protocol, like to, to me, like, you know, we don't have to make it so complicated there. Like DeFi protocol obviously need the DAOs, right? Because like right now, like Maker or Balancer or Uniswap, like any DeFi protocol is like becoming big. It's like taking bigger role in, in the world right now. But those protocols don't have any specific governance structure, like don't have any legal entity usually. Like they might have foundation, but that doesn't really govern or kind of like, you know, be the safety net for protocols. So we, so, so that's why like, so like if the DeFi protocol just go evolve in the future, but don't have like, like specific governance structure, it will be like, you know, only a Degans <laughs> will go and use it, which is not really ideal future. So that's why we need it out, right? Like we need to, to make it decentralized to 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 avoid the censorship like risk or like you know having small number of community or legal entity like uh will just like over control the protocol basically make it safe for everyone to use it. Uh, so so that's why like I started focusing on DeFi protocols governance. Um and and one thing that I I think you know uh, one thing that I noticed was like participation rate is the biggest problem for DeFi protocol. I mean, all of the DAOs, but this was governance, right? Um, so I think we all agree that delegation is one of the best way um, to to basically solve this border empathy problem. Uh, so it's great. Right now we have delegates like industry, but the, 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 the question is from here, like, so the most, so the current, like if you look at the current delegates, 99% of delegates are individuals. Like Linda, she left, Pony, Katie, Mike, Scott, uh, Rick. Anyway, like most of them are usually influencers and um, they kind of use their influence to, to get delegated from communities or like token holders, right? Uh, but the thing is like, you know, so like so those individual delegates kind of like started realizing that hey <laughs> being delegated is kind of full-time and it's too overwhelming to 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 kind of like take part of like it's like definitely it's not like what they're saying is like it's not sustainable to be a delegate uh by one person like because um if you look up maker like right now there's like you know nine active on-chain proposals uh which and each of the proposals have like a bunch of you know discussion and forum pass and look at forum discussions 94 active discussions like which is crazy and usually um those individual delegates are participating in multiple product protocols or DAOs. So it's obviously unsustainable, right? Uh, uh, in terms of number of the work, uh, the amount of work, and and also like uh, from the point of like profession, like expertise, it's 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 not the best as well. Like sometimes um, some proposal require like um, legal understanding in specific country, or it might require like auditing skill, or it might require uh understanding of token economics like which obviously are not the thing that can be covered by one person right so um so my so my learning is that delegates 
will take huge part of DAO governance in the future. But those delegates will be group-based delegates, not individuals. Just like existing political structure. Uh, so FAMA, it's it's in Japanese, but we have like uh, a lot of delegate, like group-based delegates in our country. And um, I, I'm thinking, you know, a US too, but like, I think, you know, uh, all like DAO governance delegate cheese will be quite similar. Uh, and yeah, so this is the list of the group based delegate cheese that we have right now. And today I would love to know and also have discussion with you guys about this governance, uh, like group based delegate cheese. Um, right now we have like about 10 to 15, I guess, governance delegate, including university, uh, like about like 15 governance teams. Um, and the, um, so, so yeah, like I will like kind of like share some like governance teams that have like specific kind of like characteristic such as Flipside. Um, so is there anyone from Flipside today? No? OK. Uh, but anyway, Flipside is one of the delegates, uh, a lot of DAOs, um, like Maker, uh, Hop, um, Arved, and so on. But anyway, they're group-based delegates, one of the group-based delegates. But their characteristic is really about data-driven. So not only participate in DAO governance and vote of the representative, um, they kind of like um, help DAOs like build in this kind of dashboard to easily visualize the um, delegated token um, and also, yeah, like the kind of like distribution, delegated OP, delegate OP distribution and visualize the top delegates, amount of delegated token. Anyway, like uh, they are really data-driven community. Uh, group, like data driven team as a governance team, which is pretty unique. Um, on the other hand, we have governance team such as StableNode. Um, so, StableNode is like it's kind of hard to categorize them, but like they are like, you know, highly focused on participating in DAO, like in a next level. Uh, like, do is like, uh, do is the like punker you might like you obviously you know him but do is like the biggest delegates uh, maker um he's like maker mafia so like he's like super uh involved like getting involved with all the uh governance uh like all the proposals and discussion inside of the maker and 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 also like there's another member called bobby who's like, you know, like taking more role. Like uh, he is contributing to LMM Finance as a delegate is, but right now, like he's like helping DAOs to structure the operation or working group, like, so yeah, like they're like um, highly kind of like delegates that get involved in DAO from like, um, um, I don't know, it's, um, anyway, yeah, we have Stable Note and also there's a um, group based delegates called Gauntlet, um, which is mostly um, the delegate is uh, the guy called Matt, but they, they, uh, they are pretty professional as a delegate as well because they have two data analytics that support Matt. To work as a delegate team. So basically, like if there's a proposal pop up, um, Matt will like uh, Matt will kind of like review the proposal, and then two data analysts kind of like review the proposal as well to do like fact checking, like it, if the number is correct, if the number inside of like a, a proposal is correct, and do some due diligence within group to to make decision, which is. Which is pretty professional work, right? If you compare to to random border. <laughs> so, and, um, and also so Doug like, had a question, um, Kohei. Just sorry to yep. interrupt you. Is um, so his 
question is, is are also when can we remove can you remove the presentation share when we're talking because i'm i'm seeing myself in the video and it's very meta <laughs> so stop which one for a second. okay cool when you move to the when you when you move to the uh like the google meets thing like i see oh, myself, yeah, I see yeah, myself yeah, talking right. and it gets really oh, exciting um so so doug if you want to ask your question out loud that's cool um, yeah. and marcus thanks for coming just one second um and yeah, definitely check out the recording on YouTube. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, I've, I've you know, with my own personal exploration of different uh, uh, DAOs and their websites, um, you know, you just were on optimisms, but I'm seeing that there's some commonalities but between them. And I'm just curious if there's some DAO tooling under the hood that, that they're all kind of using. Is it all built internally? Um, or any resources, uh, you know, similar to that. Because I'm building something from scratch, and and this will, you know, that seems like wow. So how did they get there? And and is there maybe like some kind of WordPress for DAOs? <laughs> you mean like DAO tooling in, for DAO governance? Yeah, that the dashboards. Um, you know, you, you had make makers a dashboard up earlier. Uh, okay. Resources, right? Like, is that all? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is, it's all built internally. Or is there oh yeah, it's common? it's all built internally because like Mega has like pretty unique culture, which is like no third party tooling. So, so basically, uh, built every single tooling by themselves. There's a team. There's a team called uh, DUX DAX team inside of Mega, which basically built everything uh, by themselves. Okay, um, so yeah. you're saying there's an opportunity for some uh, really quick minded entrepreneurs such as ourselves to develop some sort of uh, WordPress for DAOs. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, still, like, Maker has the best quality uh, for right. DAO, like, governance tooling. So, yeah, like, if you can build uh, the tooling with, which has, like, you know, the, the same level of quality, like, yeah, like, I, I think, you know, like, a lot of DAO want to use it there. I can definitely see, uh, you know, on the flip side, why they would want to, uh, you know, keep that little trade secret or not, you know, give that away. Um, so maybe even some sort of like, ooh, there should be, is there any like foundations that are similar to like the Ethereum Foundation that's like kind of a nonprofit for the public good? Uh, like what we're doing, maybe this could evolve into it, but like some-, some Well, all we get a Gitcoin grant. This is a public good. So like if Metis would like to support this education. <laughs> support it um we also had maker two weeks ago so definitely take a look at our, our youtube videos just to see like you know what that was amazing yeah so that's really good okay cool well uh there certainly has got to be some sort of other dow tooling that maybe that maker's not using but but you know for some little you know little baby dow like that you're trying to grow up in a big dow and you just start with something and I think that the thing is, is that like, let us not rely on um, tools to solve coordination or like mm. uh, weak design. Um, I think that we have to develop like effective scope and design and goals and then seeing how we could leverage those tools to actually help us build it. Or like, you know, what I love about this community, it's like collaborative, right? So we're all trying to meet the same goals. How can we work with one another to to kind of achieve that? And so maybe there are people, you know, like Kohei who are working on Senate that could solve some of the problems that you have at Metis, and then you can just collab, right? Rather than trying to reinvent the wheel or spending so much time and money building your own, you know, personal interfaces, right? Which mm -hmm. might not even increase engagement in voters. So very true. Sure. I have to look at that. Thank you. Sure. No worries. Uh, thanks for the question and also thanks for the follow up themes. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, the my talk is, is almost done. Um, so I think I'll, I will share a little bit of like things that I'm working on right now, which is 10 8. Um, so, the, I think, you know, um, so, Things that I learned from the existing governance teams is that they they have like a lot of issues to to collaborate with other team members 
as a delegate, to, to work as a delegate, um, such as, like, one of the issue right now that they have, right, uh, one of the issue that they have right now is that, like, how to, like, how to keep aware of due time for all the proposals across Dallas. It's, like, super hard. Um, as I, as yeah. I show you, like, right now, there's, like, nine active on-chain proposals on Maker, and there's a bunch of other on-chain or off-chain proposals on other DAOs, right? Um, and for the group-based delegates, um, it's tricky because, like, you have to have a consensus with other team members. Like, you have to spend the time to discuss for each of the proposals, have a consensus, and then do multi-sig, like multi-sign uh, to execute a vote, which takes more time than individual delegates. And sometimes one might be, might, might not be like fast enough to sign a, sign a, uh, sign a multi-sig to execute a vote, right? So, um, yeah, like, so, so, so that's why, like, you know, it's so easy to miss a proposal to vote for governance teams right now. So we make kind of like this dashboard that you can roll at connect and set kind of like a watch list for the DAOs to participate and then see all the active proposals across DAOs in a single page with the time left and the status that if you bought it or not. We track all of the activity of your voting address. And then what's cool about it is that, so it's not live yet. It's going to be live uh, at the end of this week. Uh, but what's cool about this product is that you'll get a notification. Oops. All right. Please mute yourself <laughs> if you're not speaking. Uh, so what's cool about this product is that okay, you'll get oh. OK, uh, I'll just finish it and give you guys. Uh, uh, so what's cool about this product is that you will get a notification uh, through Discord, Slack, Telegram, or EPNS that like, hey, uh, like you, like you have like this proposal X X X that you haven't bought it on Maker or Balance or anywhere, and there's a time limit. Like the the due time is like twelve time, like twelve hours left, right? Like. You can get a notification for proposal you haven't bought it on and ending soon. Uh, so yeah, just like we are building this product to make sure that delegates can easily keep up with the due time for every proposals and make sure that they the make sure to to vote for every single proposals. Uh, but yeah, like today it's not really about like introducing my product. It's more about um, like kind of like discussing about the discussing about governance um, within this community members. So yeah, uh, I think I want to, if there's no question, I want to move on to uh, um, like my prepared question to discuss. Um, Kohei, can you just kind of uh reiterate again the problems that you were solving in regards to um the notification so like what i've also seen is that um i had to like personally submit links to forums or proposals um within bankless dow for people to like pay attention to and have like a conversation mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i think that their use case is in twofold right so it's like what is the value of notifying individual members that a proposal is coming or something that they should act on? And then what is the value from a more centralized perspective of that notification for delegates? So like, yeah, what is the solution it provides from a member's perspective? And then what is the solution that it can provide from a delegate's perspective, whether it's visibility or effectiveness or, you know, allowing them to like, you know, have the time frame to actually do the work that they need to as a delegate? Yeah. Um... So for delegate T side, it's easier uh, to answer. The, um, so the problem, are you asking me about pro problem, right? Uh, clear, like how I find a problem, right? So the, the problem is that 
um, let's say if you have like 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 fifteen proposals across DAOs to book for every single week, it's impossible to to just keep aware of due time for every single proposal all the time, right? Um, especially maybe like you know, like doing it like in the middle of like uh, having discussion or waiting reply from your team members. Um, you might just easily miss the proposals about it because like you, it's, as I said, it's impossible to just keep aware of like all the due time, every single time. Um, right. Uh, does, does it make sense or it's not clear enough? Well, this makes sense. Actually, like Punkar, since you are in um, meta governance as well, like what value do these notifications or timeframes fit? into that like, so i'm not sure if i have a clear answer or question but like i think there is like a lot of things happening and as kohei like show there is like multiple proposals there are like pipeline of like 60 proposals then 10 of them will be for vote on chain and sometimes it's hard to navigate through it and know what to prioritize so i I truly believe that prioritization is kind of the key. So I know that now I need to focus on this too. And this is like very time sensitive, uh, critical for the protocol. If I don't have more time than focus on this too, I just focus only on those two. And uh, if I get more time, I you know there is some other on the roadmaps which I can uh, review, but it's more like nice to have. If I don't have that capability of you know, knowing the timeline, prior, being able to prioritize those. I might pick two which are totally unimportant and like spend so much time on it and then like totally yeah, forget sense. about the others, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that's like, I think that totally makes sense. Just like focus on proposals that you're capable of, like, like the kind of, kind of like you have the like right like expertise to to make decision right like and, and also like you know at maker there's proposals called emergency proposals which kind of like pops up <laughs> in like unexpected timing <laughs> so it's super easy to miss proposals but as well uh so yeah i think that's kind of the problem that i that we are trying to to tackle and solve but Anyway, uh, as I said, like, you know, I don't want to talk about my product full time. So maybe, you know, we can move on to discussion time. I think, oh God, it's already 47. But so uh, I, I prepared three key questions about DAO governance that we can discuss. I want to start with the question of like, how do we increase the number of delegators? Uh, because I think, Mega has the highest number of delegated, like percentage of delegated token, but was it like 15 or 16 percent? Funker, do you know the, the right number? You mean de delegated MKR to delegates? Yeah, percentage uh, of delegated MKL uh, out of like total talk, like total supply. I think it's around 10 to 15 percent, but I don't know the exact number. Right, right. But like, it's about that, right? Like, I think, you know, the Maker has the highest number, but it's still like 10 or 15%. I think it's, it's maybe even less, uh, actually, now. Uh, there were some, some changes. So I can check mm -hmm. it out, but it's still low, honestly. Right. Like, I think, you know, most of Dell have the same problem too. Like, like it's, it's so hard to convince people to delegate their voting, like voting, like power. Like at Optimism and ENS, like they got pretty good way, which is like just let people delegate their voting power when they get airdrop. But not all of the DAOs will do airdrop, right? Obviously. Um, so how do we increase the number of delegators? Oh, 14.51%. Thank you. So yeah, like this is something that we can discuss probably. Yeah, go ahead, Shadi. Hey guys, just a point of information I think is interesting to note, but you have to keep in mind that between 40 and 60% of tokens are being actively traded, so therefore are held on sexes, right? So the majority of token holders aren't holding them in their wallets or aren't aligned with the project. 
So the total delegated number should be taken from the uh, non-sex holders. And that might give you a better perspective on the health of the delegation community. That's a super good point. That's a super good point. So that's why we have like a new innovation at Element Finance called voting ball, which is you can not only delegate your voting power, at the same time, you can use your token to do any DeFi thing, like, you know, yield farming or pull your token to like, or yeah, like I think that's like, yeah, like Shadi's point is like super important. Yeah, like that's true. Like we really need voting bot for every DAO soon. Do, do you guys like any others have like any idea to solve this problem? What's the exact question, the direct question again? Because it was uh, like how, <laughs> okay, nice, nice. So the question was, how can we increase the number of delegators? I don't know whether or not the problem is, is us having delegators. Like, I think that the problem is, is that like, we are allowing our members to vote on everything. Right. So like maybe a shift of that is rather than like, how do we delegate our responsibilities onto somebody else? And more about like, what sort of areas do we think that people can actually participate in knowing that they would actually have the knowledge base for that. So like when it comes to like protocols, right? Like people don't know if they're gonna go to the TVL or whatever. And so you see that the engagement is quite low, but like from an investor's perspective, like maybe they're gonna be much more engaged. So then, then you'll see much more whale type of activity happening in that as well, right? And so I think that the question is less about how do we give up our responsibilities onto other people? And that was the issue with delegated voting and more about how do we create tiers um, within our voting structures so that the right people vote on the things that they have the capacity and knowledge base to or the buy-in to and then what are the other ones to like ensure that the healthy community and like you know sustainability of it um, because like some other people might be like short selling for example and like how does that fall into <laughs> down mm. governance so. good point hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. that's true like how do we give up the the governance point and like like identify someone who's like more like the right who have like right experience or background to to take the part go ahead Anka. so i if i when i think about like delegation voting and overall governance uh i think it's secondary for almost every token holder or it used to be like we have launched governance token but we haven't really like said like we are launching the token because like we want you to be voting on the proposals mm -hmm. no everyone just launched their governance token because we want money <laughs> uh yeah, and, sure. like, and like okay so you are basically launching to fundraise and then you are expecting those people actually be voting no like you know you majority of those people just speculate on the price and, yeah. and so on and so forth so we are getting from that kind of mindset into maybe slightly different or like mm. having higher percentage of people actually caring about the protocol. And I, I can see it now, like, as I'm involved in uh, maker governance, uh, like I see like those VCs, those whales are actually thinking about the protocol. Like they are, they are having resources and they start really doing research and like, want to vote on stuff and so on, which has not been really a case like maybe a year ago, but we are getting there. So I think this is just a natural progression kind of like we have launched it as like to, to get the money and now we are trying to get people actually vote. So to your question, how we can get more vote uh, delegated, like I think overall get more participation at first, like actually caring that like my tokens should be used for decision making at first then the second day it's okay if the best way how to make a decision is delegation then like i delegate to of course to me uh if you if you want delegate to me <laughs> uh, <laughs> and i will make the right decision yeah cool interesting
So what what you were saying is like you know, like right now it's not really a problem uh, that DAOs have low delegator n- low number of delegators because most of the DAO wants their native token just to find race. But it's it's gonna solve over time once DAOs got more intention towards like decentralization. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I think it will be improving over time. So we just like this was the first step, just fundraise money. Like mm. nobody was having resources to actually make be making decisions. Like they were happy that they can actually hold those tokens in their custody and wallet. And now they are getting resources to actually research more on the protocol. I may be making decisions. So yeah, I'm just saying like it will be natural progression and also mm. with regulation coming. Like it would need to happen. We need to prove to regulators mm-hmm. that we are actually decentralized. So I think it, there will be like some even external factors which might speed up this kind of more voting participation, more delegation. What what thing will what what do you think about? Oh, like let me let me go uh, ask a question first. Sorry. What what do you think will be the most like? Uh, what will be the tipping point to? to push DAOs uh, towards the decentralization the most. Is it, a, do you think about it's, do you think it's about like pressure from like governance, uh, government, like your US government or any other country's government or like regulation or like, what do you think will push them the most towards the, yeah, towards that direction? Sorry, what, is, what do you mean by decentralization? in this context, right? Because uh, it's me? really not decentralized. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Your token it's, holder it's, is not decentralized. It's, it's right? super simple. It's super simple. Just like a boy having small number of individuals or entities that over control or extract the value from the protocol. That's it. Just like, just like <laughs> distribute your governance power to to make it so complicated and inefficient, I think it's okay. Like to just avoid a centralized sen- censorship, you know, risk. Uh, that's what I mean by decentralization. I, I so think your, honestly, sorry, go ahead. No, uh, will be very short. Uh, so to to your to your question about the ping point, I think uh, regulation uh, is playing big role. And you can mm. see MakerDAO at the moment, like the biggest assumption, why, like it's one of the biggest assumptions why actually mm-hmm. the end game plan it's now kind of uh, trying to get through and it will be probably the biggest transformation in DAOs ever, it's regulation. So I think like the, the regulation, it's like the, you know, something what it's like speeding up things. I am not sure if there will be like a tipping point. Like from now, we would everything will change. I am believing more in like natural progression. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I feel like MakerDAO is toward like going kind of like a, the opposite direction of decentralization due to the regulation side there. Like I mean, if we if like they go for end game plan direction, like the, it will be, but. It's not really decided yet. No. I don't know. It's it's just like from from the point of my view. But uh, anyway, internal. Yeah. Maker's uh, actually having an existential crisis right now, right? Right. Where yeah. like the centralists are the ones who are like doing the things and are okay for the lack of decentralization, and then you have those that are still like on the ethos of decentralization. I think that the problem is is that when we're using governance or governance tokens. We should really define even for legality of like who is a shareholder Mm. and who is a community, right? And I think that that's what's going to help us in this like age of decentralization is that those that have bought into tokens or into the ecosystem have different initiatives or intentions, right? As opposed to those that are building the ecosystem. And I think that what we're going to see is a two-tiered approach to governance. Um, And sometimes we have to align more with our shareholders because they're putting on the lights. But then other times it's like we'll have to align with our community because they're the ones building in the ecosystem. Right. And so 
it's up to the DAO to determine like who is more important, I think. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. interesting. Themes, I feel like those things are conflated often to the detriment of community. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's true. Hey, go ahead, Shadi. Um, to add my assistance, I think it's mostly going to come from governments. I mean, if, if we consider the se September 16th hearing in the US, you know, they said thank out if, if you have a core team of a CEO with a hierarchical structure, then by senior age, you know, you're basically a business, therefore you're a security, therefore your tokens are security, right? Um, and that makes like a lot of sense, actually. That makes a lot of sense. So if we consider decentralization in two parallels, you have the technical parallel and then the organizational parallel, um, the technical parallel, let's say, front ends, email used for Twitter, email used for Discord, right? uh, protocol stack on GitHub, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's always going to trend towards decentralization as, as long as the ethos doesn't change. But when it comes to organizational decentralization, the only push is going to come from uh, security layers. So if we consider a lot of DAOs nowadays, the main reason why they have a DAO is basically as a pseudo security barrier from getting prosecuted by regulators. So they set up a foundation, spin up a DAO and a BVI, have it as a non-trust, have the core team getting paid by the DAO in some fashion, and then, hey, presto, like we've circumvented everything in the world, right? That's what they think. Uh, but in reality, that's going to change. So I guess, in my opinion, most of the pressure is going to come from governments, especially when you consider the main point of decentralization and the main trade-off, which is efficiency, right? Decentralized organizations aren't more efficient than lean startups. They're just not. We consciously make that trade-off in order to have security uh, and decentralization and trustless operation. Those are my yeah. thoughts. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think I totally agree with the point of, like, DAOs need to admit that they have, there is a trade-off of efficiency to be a DAO. Uh, so, so that's why, like, I feel like, 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 call that the doctrine DAO or social DAO, just, like, like, I, I couldn't, like, like, convince myself that those will fit into, like, DAO's framework. Um, I mean, yeah. But anyway, uh, I think, you know, it's, it's already a time. So I'll just pass it back to themes. Uh, thank you so much for listening. That was really great. Thank you so much, Kohei. Um, and obviously we have a Telegram group to continue the conversation. Um, and next right. week it'll be Sean, um, who will be talking about meta governance. So hopefully you gained a lot from this uh, engagement. But yeah, feel free to join our Telegram group because that's like where the spicy things happen. <laughs> Thanks, right, everyone. Have a great week. Have a good one. Thank you, Gohei. Thank you.